Stanley Walter Kenyon was a Wellington-based photographer. Uh, we know that he was active in the 1920s and 1930s. For our purposes, his career really begins in 1938, and he was awarded the associateship of the Royal Photographic Society. And he was also awarded a contract to photograph NAFI installations across Northern Europe. So this was the social side of World War II, places that servicemen and women could go and relax, lounges, bars, shops, that kind of thing. I did a lot of the entering, hours and hours of sitting with a ledger and a computer, trying to decipher the writing and actually make sense of what was written in the ledgers. I think my favourite picture is the one at Wellington Fate of the little boy feeding his sister ice cream. I personally can relate to it because the little girl's wearing a smock dress and I had one like that. Kenyon's career really started locally on a small scale. He would photograph quite mundane things, so passport photographs, um, if you had something that you wanted to insure, he would come and photograph it for the insurers. Wedding photographs and engagement photographs, lots of those. Through his career, he gradually moved more into commercial photography and he would photograph uh, plants and products for local companies. So, for example, um, if Van Heusen's, the shirt manufacturers, wanted to put out a new catalogue, then he would come down and photograph the shop floor with all the girls sewing. He would photograph your nice new lobby. Um, and if you had products, then he would photograph those too. And in fact, the key image of the exhibition that you will have seen as you walked in was of Kenyon taking a photograph of something as mundane as a towel rail. And he had, you know, three huge cameras and lights and an assistant helping him, and that's what it took to get that one shot. One of my favourite pictures was of people in Corporation Street. They were all men, I seem to recall, but they were, a lot of them were in bowler hats, which were quite popular at the, in those days, and they were trying to peer into the windows of a car showroom. Later in his career, he moved more into industrial photography. Um, one of the things he photographed was Plymouth Power Station down on the Hoe, and we have this amazing image of the fans inside the turbine that someone would never really see. We also have some photographs of sites that just don't exist anymore. A company called Negretti and Zambra were quite famous in their day for making barometers and they would employ master glass blowers to create the glass tubes that would go inside them. And we have photographs of the masters and apprentices working together creating these tubes. Now, Negretti and Zambra went out of business and as far as we know, there are no other photographs of that works. So that's unique to our collection. I think my favorite photograph was actually a photograph of a collection of drainage pipes taken somewhere in a Wellington factory. And the way he'd taken them and the way the light was on them, they were just like the fish scales that you see on a piece of fish in the fishmongers. Some of the other work was surprising too. He took pictures of the interiors of Boots departmental store, which I understand was still in High Street in Taunton. I started off by um, copying the details out of the registers, uh, recording things like the dates, who the client was, what the image was of, um, and any other details that he gave. Looking at the registers had been quite tantalising because you couldn't see the images at the same time, but this time you could actually see the images. And to me, they were just absolutely amazing. You could uh, zoom in on them and see such fine detail. For instance, one of them showed a malt chamber and you could zoom in on each individual sprouting grain and to me for somebody doing that in the pre-digital age was just amazing. Stanley Kenyon died in 1979 and his family held on to the collection for a little while. Then in the 1990s they decided to deposit it with the Somerset Studies Library. The main problem with this collection is that they have vinegar syndrome. And this means that the acetate layer in each of the negatives is starting to degrade. It's a chemical process and it leads to blistering and bubbling and also releasing quite a noxious gas. We realised it was really time to do something with these negatives. They were starting to degrade and the degradation was speeding up. So we had to work quickly. We ended up going into partnership 
and that was thanks to the Somerset Industrial Archaeological Society and to the Somerset Archaeological and Natural History Society. And between us, we managed to scrape the funding together to send all of the acetate negatives, the ones suffering from vinegar syndrome, out to an external digitizer who would look after them for us. So the end result is 60,000 images. We know exactly what each and every one of them is, and we can now make those available to the wider community for the first time.